and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. Today, we've got a good AFC matchup on tap between the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers. to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now a carry for the veteran. This is D'Angelo Williams. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Now a carry for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. And for Le'Veon Bell, a little bit of good news for he and the Steelers with that suspension being lessened from four games to three recently. And not that he needed any extra motivation because he is rehabbing a knee injury from last year, but that'll speed things up knowing that he can come back now for the week four game against Kansas City. But a tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Three down, three down. Right, here we go. Blue 30. On third down, Roethlisberger. And he'll be grabbed from behind and slung down like a rag doll. Allen Branch able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Back deep, Danny Amendola for New England. Taken in at the 22. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Patriots take over. Now they'll run it on the toss. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, they're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things <laughs> out. Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent, not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. Over the middle, it's Amendola. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. We saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. Second down and four. Right, here we go. Garoppolo now. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Fresh set of downs here. Now coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. And he's going to get into the end zone. So cue up the Gronk spike. It's a Patriot touchdown. Rob Gronkowski from 13 yards out. 
And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. And the Patriots add six to their lead. Goskowski now, after the touchdown, he'll send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. On second down, Roethlisberger. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Roethlisberger will throw. Going for the deep. He's got him in, complete. And he's brought down after a good game. That goes for a gain of 31. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes, just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. Second down and just one. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. Now they'll run it on the toss. Now Bell hit. He lost the football. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Again, here's Blood fighting through. And he's brought down after a good game. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Well, that was a great example of what we've been told from the time we first put on pads as little guys in the backyard. Effort will be rewarded if you keep giving it. And how about that run? Broke through a couple of tackles, refused to go down, legs churning. I like what I saw there. Here's Blunt, and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Garoppolo. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. 
When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decide to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. position now is really a glorified wide receiver we're still asking a lot of those guys they have to block as well and every now and then they don't come down with the football third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass they come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Eluding the pressure right. And this is going to be incomplete. Martellus Bennett, the intended receiver. And it'll be fourth down. And that was a nice play. He knocked it away, but... Obviously, you want the interception in this situation. You want to take away any chance and they have any decision to make on fourth down. But things happen so quickly in the end zone in this compressed area of the field that you're just happy to knock it away and not allow a touchdown. And Goskowski's kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So they were able to move the ball into the red zone, but they'll wind up coming away with just three. Yeah, 32-yarder. That's equal to an extra point nowadays, and those are no problem for an NFL kicker. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they head back onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. That, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that what against symptomatic? Yeah, I like that. Your analysis symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Bryant spread out to the right. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. A screen to Bell. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain, and it's second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. Big problems getting the play out, obviously. This will be a what delay. You got? Huh? What you got? Huh? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All night, every day.
And some real confusion here. They won't even get to the line. Yeah, the play clock running down, so Mike Tomlin burns a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. And now we're circling here around the two-minute warning. This is a setup play, trying to get one last one in before the clock warning. 